Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Welcome. It's good to see you here. We're, we're right now, we're in the middle of a part of our service called Tzuke de Zimra, uh, which is often translated as the, uh, the, the opening songs of praise. Tzuke, like pasuk, the verses. De Zimra, like zmirot. These are songs of praise. And the idea here is to kind of warm ourselves up to the, the core of our services, to the core of our tefillah, to the real deep prayerful work that we're meant to do this morning. And, and the rabbis in the Talmud talk, talk all about why psuche de zimra, why do we start with praise? And, and they have all sorts of explanations that usually amount to, you know, it's good to express gratitude or to express praise before you ask for something. It's a, it's a good technique in the world. But I want to offer you a different explanation of what these opening prayers are all about. Psuche de zimra. The other meaning of the word zimra, or that shoresh, that root, zayin mem resh, is to prune. So these are the verses of pruning. So what is pruning? Right, pruning is the intentional redirection of energy so that what you want to grow can in fact grow. And I think that's what we're doing here, right? As we settle into our seats, as we settle into Shabbat, as we settle into wherever we are emotionally and spiritually, this is an opportunity to prune away, 
to remove that, that which you really don't want to direct energy towards today, that which is not going to help you grow, and say, this is where I want to focus my energy. I could tell you this morning, I'm really trying to focus my energy towards opening my heart in prayer for those who need healing, those who are nearby, those who are far away, those who are struggling physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. I'm really, I'm trying to direct the energy within me, the energy that God grants us in this world towards healing, healing of those who need it. And so Amen. I ask you as we work our way through these opening prayers to consciously direct your energy to the parts of your prayer that you really want to grow, that you really want to produce, that you really want to be able to harvest this morning. Continue on page 147. Amen. Mm.
49. <laughs> Kadosh, 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 kadosh
We're going to say now the last blessing before we go to Shema. Um, those of you who are here in person obviously notice that we have reoriented our space uh, once again out here. Um, I don't know if you can tell if you're with us um, streaming. Um, we're trying to find the, the best way to be, uh, to have beautiful services and also be good to our neighbors and let them have a quiet Shabbos morning. And so we're experimenting with the space. Um, of course, in the hopes that um, soon it will be safe for us to be back inside together, which I think we're going to, uh, we're shooting for a January start to that. Um, but just now, um, just now as we, as we turned for a moment to say Baruch Hu, I turned toward this wall, which of course is the west wall because the east is this way, because my instinct is always to turn toward where the ark is. And so, um, and, and I, had, I realized I have to be, I don't know if anyone else did that too, and, or if it took a moment to realize we have to shift. And I, I'm grateful for the mistake because whenever something like this happens, I realize how much we're on autopilot in our lives and we just do the things that we're used to doing instead of stopping and taking stock and actually assessing what does this moment call for and demand of me. And so I want to ask you as we go into Shema to think about reorientation this morning to think about the ways that we kind of operate on autopilot, that we maybe engage the same relationships in the same ways, even if the people or the circumstances have changed, and when we might be called upon to reorient ourselves, to turn in a different direction, to offer a different perspective, um, and, and maybe to try things a little bit differently. Maybe next Shabbos when we come back, we'll be oriented the other way again, and that'll be okay, and then we'll have to, we'll have to do that, that work again. But I feel like there's a kind of spiritual vitality in asking us to be awake enough to try to get it right. Um, so I'm going to invite you now. We'll say the last blessing before Shema together on page 154. And each time when we would typically turn to face east during the service, we're going to try to remember to turn and face uh, toward, toward the actual east here, um, particularly when we rise uh, for the Amidah in a couple of moments. Page 154 is
To our Torah service, we're going to say Mourner's Kaddish, Kaddish Yatom. Um, 
There are a couple people in particular I just want to give some love to in our community who are, have experienced recent loss. Um, to Hannah Roth, our, our dear Hannah Roth, who um, is still in Jerusalem with her family, um, whose stepfather, Rabbi Avi Isaacs, uh, died very suddenly about a week and a half or two weeks ago. And um, we just send love and strength to Marsha and to Hannah and Rabbi Daniel and to, really to the whole family and, and to Kathleen back home. Um, strength and love and healing. Um, to, to Larry Trilling, um, to Larry and Jennifer, uh, Larry's beloved father, Stan, um, also died about two weeks ago. And, um, and I also know that we have a number of people who are marking yard sites today. Um, we offer our love and strength uh, to all of you this morning. We'll honor you with Aliot in just a few moments. If there's anyone else. And uh, just, um, just two days ago, um, Renat Greenberg, um, her stepfather died. Um, we'll send out that information to the, to the whole Greenberg Creole family, to Renat and Liana, um, to Levi and Milo, we send our love. And so for all of those um, who we've said and all of those whose names haven't been said, if you're grieving the, the death of a loved one or if you're observing a yard site, the anniversary of a death of a loved one, we invite you to please rise. We turn to page 121 for Mourner's Kaddish. Yit Kadal, Yit Kadash, Shemei Rabbah. Ve'yalema, Yivera Kirute, Ve'amlich Malchute. Ve'chai Echon, Uv'yom Echon, Uv'chaye Bechol Beit Yisrael. Ba'agala uvizman kari ve'imru. Amen. Amen. Yehesh ve'ishmeirah. Yit barach ve'yish tabach ve'yit pa'ar ve'yit romam ve'yit naseh. Ve'yit hadar ve'yit ale ve'yit halal shmei dekudesha ve'yitru. Le'ela min kol berchata ve'shirata. Tush bechata ve'nechemata. Da'amiran ve'alma ve'imru. Amen. Yehesh lama rabam ishmaya. Mechayim, Aleinu ve'yau kol Yisrael ve'imru. Amen. Ose shalom im Romav. Hu ya'ase shalom. Aleinu ve'yau kol Yisrael ve'imru. Amen. 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 Mizikhanam libracha. May you find comfort and consolation in the days ahead. We're going to turn now to our Torah service, which is on page begins on page one sixty eight. Ein kamu kama Elohim Adonai Ein kema secha Malchuka malchuko lamir Umen shatcha bechol rovador Adonai melech, Adonai malach Adonai im lof le'olam ba'er Adonai oz ve'amo yiten Adonai ebarech et amo b'shalom
Welcome. You can have a seat. We're going to be reading this morning from Parshat Vayigash. We are near the end of the book of Genesis, Bereshit. And Rabbi Dr. Devor Weisberg is going to be our first Torah reader this morning. We are beginning on page 283, chapter 46, verse 28. Before we go to the second Aliyah, we have, um, we have an, inc an incredible opportunity right now 
um, to bless this beautiful human, uh, Lil Yay! Noah, um, who because of COVID missed a, yes, yes. <laughs> Because we weren't able to be together um, physically, missed a bunch of these beautiful these markers in the in the first two years. But now we get to celebrate Noah's uh, two year second birthday together as a community. And um, and I'm gonna in, in, <laughs> and I want to invite Rabbi Sadok to share with us um, just a couple words about Noah um, that would have come uh, two two years ago, I think, if had we had the opportunity to do this together at that time, and it may be even sweeter now that we get to know and we already know and love this child as we hear these words. Thank you. I, um, I didn't actually prepare anything because I realized today, I was like, oh, like we, we never actually had the, um, we never had the welcoming, official welcome Noah at the Torah, um, Aliyah, uh, to just a little over two years ago or about two years ago. Um, and I missed it, and we missed it, and then, and at the same time, there was this incredible gift of Noah growing up with all of you, and your patience uh, <laughs> with, um, you know, what it meant to, to, to be doing all of this and zooming um, with all of you. And so, so first of all, just tremendous gratitude and um, the gift of of somehow bringing her up in this community already. Um, these past two years, and, and it's been such a gift, and all of you have been so wonderful. Um, and, I, and I just also want to say on our behalf, having a, a baby and a toddler on screen so much for people who might be going through a fertility journey or struggling to, um, to have children of their own, and if that was something that, that they were wanting, um, I recognize and I've, I've been aware, we've been aware this whole time, um, that that might be something that could be painful at times. And so to, to all of those for whom that was your experience or continues to be experienced, just sending you blessings and love and um, just gratitude to, to this whole community for, uh, for being Noah's community and our community already for these two years um, and hopefully for many, many more years to come. So thank you. So um, I, thank you for, for <laughs> Noah's already just schmoozing. She's schmoozing the crowd. Um, I, I just want to say uh, one word um, to the two of you who have been really frontline workers during this incredibly difficult time. Um, Sarah's a doctor, for those of you who don't know, is, work, is working in the hospital really in the first COVID rotation and since then. Um, and to raise a child, a tiny beauty, in this world, in this time, uh, I know has been incredibly challenging, and the two of you have done it with grace. And um, and I there's a there's a line that Rabbi Sadok and I are, are both drawn to um, always in this uh, in this parsha that we were even were speaking about this morning, when Yosef's brothers I'm gonna I'm gonna just take this off so you can hear me when Yosef's brothers um, finally come before him and he can't with, he cannot hold back his um, his identity anymore from them. And, uh, and he asks all the Egyptians to leave the place, and then he turns um, to the brothers, and he says, Ani Yosef, Ani Yosef, um, Ha'od Avichai, is my father still alive? And that, that line of kind of identity, of coming out, of expressing to the world, um, of, to his brothers, who he truly is, is, is seen as like this incredible moment of self-revelation and truth. And, uh, and I just want to bless the two of you as you, uh, as you raise this incredible human in the world. Um, to listen with keen ears and with an open heart as she reveals herself to you um, in, in extraordinary and unique ways over the course of her lifetime. Um, that each time you see her develop uh, another layer of her identity um, and express another bit of herself that you welcome and embrace her with love as I'm sure you will um, because that is what you do for all of us every single day and we have incredible love and gratitude for you. I wish you uh, Mazal Tov and happy birthday to Noah. Our second aliyah um, today is on page 283. It's chapter 46, verse 31. Baruch Adonai Baruch Leolam Bo'e Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Asher Bachabanu Mikal Omim Benatan Anu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten La Torah Amen 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 Vayome Yosef Elecho Vel Bet Avi Velahav Yagida Lefaro Vyomra Elohai Ava Achai Vet 
ותביא אשר בארץ כנען באו אליי, ואנשים ראו את צאן כי אנשי מקנה היו, וצונם ופרם וכל אשר להם הביאו, והיה כי יקרא לכם פרו, ואמר מה מעשיכם, ואמרתם אנשי מקנה היו עבדך מנורנו וידעת גם אנחנו גם אבותינו בעבור תשבו בארץ גושן כי תועבד מצרים הורועי צאן ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת וחיי עולם נטע בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה נא לעמוד פייבל דוד בן חיים ויעקב בן דוד לעלייה השלישית. Before we go to the third Aliyah, I want to take a moment. We're honoring Ross Levinson, our beloved Ross, um, today with the second Aliyah. Um, it is the 12th yard site um, of the death of Ross's mother, Alice Levinson. I cannot believe it's been 12 years. So first, we just wish you um, continued blessings. May her memory reverberate um, for good in this world for many, many years to come. And we also wanted to just uh, take a moment to, to bless Ross and Ross's dear wife, Nan, our um, beloved founder and member and friend, um, with Rufu Ashlima, um, both of you, prayers for healing of body and spirit. And I know that um, the incredible love and friendship that sits right at the heart of your marriage and dwells deeply in your household is what um, continues to give you both strength And I hope that you both find a way to full and complete recovery. We're so grateful for you. Our third Aliyah today is on page 284. It's chapter 47, verse 1. Barchu et Adonai Hambarach Baruch Adonai Hambarach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch et Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amim Benatan Lanu et Torato Baruch et Adonai Noten HaTorah ויגד לפרעה ויאמר אבי ואחי וצונם וקרם וכל אשר להם באו מארץ כנען כנען בארץ גושן ומקצה אחאב לקח חמישה אנשים ויעשיגם לפני פרעה ויאמר פרעה אל אחאב מה מעשיהם ויאמרו אל פרעה רואה צאן עבדיך גם אנחנו גם אבותינו ויאמרו אל פרעה לגור בארץ בנו כי אין מרע לצאן אשר לבדיך כי חבל הרע בארץ כנען ואתה ישון עבדיך בארץ גושן ויאמר פרעה אל יוסף לאמור אביך ואחיך באו אליך ארץ מצרים לפניך היא במתה הארץ חושבת אביך ואת אחיך ישבו בארץ גושן ואם ידעת יש בם אנשי חייל ושמתם שמתם שרי מקנה אשר לי ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת וחיי עולם נטע בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה נא לעמוד for the fourth Aliyah I want to call 
up any people who are here with us today who are caregivers to their own parents. Um, if there's someone who's helping to care for a parent um, at this stage of their journey, or if you've just been through this chapter, um, I want to I wanna honor you this morning. So please make your way up. Thank you. Nalamod, Harav, Zevlib, Ben Dovu Brachavit, Rachel Penina, Batsvi Vidvara, Tamar Bat Ravari, Hakohen Vasara Rachel, Vet. Devora Bazamanu Malka, Vet. Eli Shava Bat Shulamit Vedavit. Ben Israel Ben Estia. Ben Israel Ben Estia, Vet Devora. Lalia Haraviit. And before we go to the fourth Aliyah, um, we honor today Jake and, um, and John, both of whom are marking the yard site, uh, the anniversary of the death of their fathers. Um, Jake, I see that it's the first, it's one year since the death of your, um, of your father, David ben Eliyahu. I hope that this year has brought you comfort and consolation. I hope that your father's memory continues to reverberate in this world. Um, may his memory be a blessing. And John May is marking the ninth yard site um, of his father, Howard May, Chaim ben David, and hope that his memory continues to be a blessing um, for you and for your whole family in the days ahead. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to say their names here, and I hope we'll be able to help hold their memory in the days ahead as well. Zichonam libracha. Our fourth aliyah is on page 285. It's chapter 47, verse 7. Our next aliyah is for our teens, and I don't know if any of them are here um, right now in this moment. So do we have any of our, any of our teens, the BBYO people? Um, and if not, um, Sammy Cantor will represent them. <laughs> not, okay. Do we have? I can't see. Nala Mood. Any teens who are here right now and not schmoozing in the back getting coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Shiri Rafaela Vadara Khanave David Yonatan Ve Rivka Bapanina Ve Yosef Lalia Hamishit Before we go to the fifth Alia um I just wanted to take a moment there's this incredibly powerful um and dramatic moment that happens uh in the Parsha 
um, this week when Yosef is reunited with his father Yaakov, and um, they've been uh, they've been obviously estranged from one another for many years um, in this terrible twist of fortune, but they end up coming together uh, before the end of Yaakov's life, and Yosef becomes a caregiver to his father, um, and and that's the the way the last chapter of his life goes, um, and it's incredibly tender actually, and, and quite beautiful. And I just wanted to take a moment to honor and recognize um, the people who uh, are living in between worlds right now um, as, you hold, uh, as you hold with love and care um, parents who might be struggling uh, with illness um, or just with old age. Uh, and I know that there's an incredible toll that that takes on the heart and sometimes on the body as well. Um, and I hope that your parents uh, know and recognize and feel the love that you are sharing. And I hope that for all of you, um, you are also receiving the nurturing and the care that you need as you, uh, as you walk through this chapter of life uh, by their sides. Um, so with love and gratitude to all of you, thank you. And our fifth aliyah um, is going to be on cha it's chapter 47, verse 11, page 286. Amen. 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 Vilechem in Bechol Aretz Kichaved Harav Meod Vatei Lach Eretz Mitzrayim Veretz Kinaan Mipenei Harav Vailake Yosef Et Kolakesef Anitza Veretz Mitzrayim Uv Eretz Kinaan Vatshever Asherheim Shomerim Vayave Yosef Et Hakesef Beita Paro Vaitom Hakesef Me Eretz Mitzrayim Uv Eretz Kinaan Vayavo uchomit raimel yosef limor havalan ulechem vilamal namut negdecha ki afes kasef vayomer yosef havu miknechem vetin alachem miknechem im afes kasef vayaviu et miknechem el yosef vayitain lahem yosef lechem vasusim uv miknei hatzon uv miknei habakar uv achamorim vayin alim balechem bechol miknechem Vashana <laughs> Neotano vet mamate vet ad matenu balachem, venia anachnu vad matenu avadim le faro, vetem ze ravenichia velo namud, veha adama lo tesha. Nala Mod. I'm going to call Jeff Zimmerman and Susanna Landris for Lalia Shlishit. So before we go to the sixth aliyah today, um, I just want to take a moment um, to, to, to recognize publicly, um, I don't know where Sammy is, he's here this morning. Hi, Sammy. Um, Sammy is, uh, is doing an incredible job organizing our teens this year, and we're so excited and so grateful. We have a really thriving uh, BBYO chapter that's happening now, and it's actually, it's really making a difference, so I want to thank you. Um, Becca and Sammy were honored with the fifth aliyah so that we could bring to light some of the great work um, that's happening. And if you know uh, a teen in your family, maybe, or in the community um, who's looking for a way and a point of connection, um, we encourage you. We're having a BBYO meeting on Tuesday, I think, that, pe that folks are welcome to come and join. But also, Rabbi Tzadok has put out a community-wide call for a teen Torah takeover on January 8th. Is that right? 
So the teens are going to be reading Torah, Haftorah, leading the service. Um, we would love uh, for you to, uh, to help us do this. And so I know um, at least a couple kids we're going to be calling on for that, but we would like more. Um, and so please be in touch if you, uh, if you yourself or if one of your kids uh, is interested and able to help us with that. It should be a great service. Okay, before we go to the sixth Aliyah, we're going to pause for Misha Beirach for a prayer for healing. I just want to ask if you uh, have somebody who you're holding in your heart today, um, or if you yourself are in need of healing a body and spirit, please stand where you are and, or, or just wave to us, and we'll make our way um, around the space uh, so that we can find you. And we really don't want to miss anybody, so if we don't see you and we come near you, make sure we can see you, okay? We're going to do our best to, to make sure we find everybody here. I'm going to just add um, a number of names that I've heard as I've gone around and, and just a few more that we're holding um, who are really uh, 
some in critical moments, uh, in, in very critical places, their health um, journeys right now, and some who are on ongoing um, healing processes. Um, our dear uh, and beloved Rabbi Cheryl Peretz, our Rabbi Tzviya Hana, but Sarah Yerachmiel Yosef, um, to Kelly Hartog, uh, Hana, but Daniel Vigisha, to Scott Ames uh, Shlomo, to our dear Hillel Kige, Hillel Ben Harav Yaakov, um, our prayers for continued healing. Um, and to Sarah, uh, to Sarah Butlav, Sarah Jones Wilder, to Nan Friedman, and to Sean Daniel, to Ricky Stage Stager, Rivka Batleya, um, and to both um, Sarah and Dalia Benor, Sarah Elisheva Bat, uh, David Vidina, Vidalia Bat, Sarah Elisheva Umazel. Um, um, uh, to to um, to Andrea Stern Goldberg, who is uh, Hana Bat Shulamit Vishmuel, um, our prayers uh, for for strength of body and spirit um, in the days ahead. Uh, to uh, to Dina Bat Chaya Vamosha, and also um, to some many of you have now met Paul Lee, um, who is one of our executive assistants um, here, and his cousin Peter is in very critical condition with COVID in the hospital. And um, we send strength and love um, to Paul and to the whole family and hold all of these folks in our hearts with prayers for refuah. <laughs> Um, we are on the sixth Aliyah, which is page 287. It's chapter 47, verse 20. Amen. Et kolad mat mitraim le faro, ki macharu mitraim ich sadehu, ki chazak alehem harav, vatihi aret le faro, ve et haam hevir oto le arim, mikte gvo mitraim ve ad katehu, rach ad mat hakoanim lo kana, ki chok la koanim, me et faro, ve achlu et chukam, asher natan lahem, faro al kain, lo macharu et ad matam. When I call Jen Snow and anyone else um, who might be here for the first time or maybe you're um, Ikar from afar, and you're coming in uh, from, from a distance, or maybe you've just been away for a little bit of time, and you are making your way back. Um, we want to welcome you back. We want to introduce you if you're, uh, if you're new. Um, so please come on up so that we can honor you with the seventh Aliyah this morning. Nalamod. Our seventh aliyah is, begins on page 288. It's chapter 47, verse 23. Before we go uh, to the seventh aliyah, though, just a quick word um, to honor Jeff Zimmerman. Um, I mentioned Kelly Hartog's name. Um, earlier, and uh, Kelly uh, has had a very hard week um, and was in the hospital uh, for, for a long time without a room. And, um, and a number of ICAR members, including Sam Hutman, including Diana Kramer and Jeff Zimmerman, 
um, sat in the hospital um, for many, many hours, sitting vigil uh, by her side and helping to give her strength and support during this time. Um, it, it happens every now and then that we need to put out an emergency call to folks to see who might be able to show up in the middle of the night in these hard places. And I want to just thank you and bless you um, for showing up when we call. And I, I know that it was uh, a great source of comfort and strength uh, for Kelly and our prayers for her continued refu uh, Our seventh aliyah again is on page 288. Amen. I want to just give each of you a chance to uh, to just say your name so that we can meet you and, and welcome you here. And then we'll close the Torah service with our final Aliyah, which is chapter 47, verse 25. So come. Welcome. Mike Sloan, visiting from Washington, D.C. I'm a member of Addis Israel. All right, welcome. Mm. Please give them uh, our love when you head back. Um, and there was one more person up here. I don't know where she went. Okay. Um, well, we welcome all of you and hope that this is uh, the beginning of a, of a long and wonderful and beautiful relationship. And Jen, it's great to meet you in person um, after uh, visiting with you on, on Zoom uh, over the course of this time. Our uh, Matir Aliyah Nalamod. Baruch 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 Atah Amen. 
We invite you to please rise as the Sefer Torah is lifted.
Have a seat. Shabbat shalom. A couple of um, quick announcements before we turn to learn some Torah this morning. Um, so first, tomorrow, as many of you know, I hope, um, is Ikar's now annual 5K fun day. Some of us will be running. Some of us will be attempting to run. Some of us will be walking. Some of us will be cheering. Some of us will be sitting uh, on our couches and cheering from home and others live in person in Cheviot. Um, this is our end of year fundraiser organized by Marissa G um, lovingly and designed to bring in the money that we will need in order to help with the resettlement of an Afghan refugee family um, that our community is uh, taking the responsibility of helping to resettle. So I hope, that, um, I hope that you will join us. If you're able to be there tomorrow morning at Cheviot Hills, we would uh, love for you to join us and you can still register. Um, and if you can't be there in person, you can still contribute. Um, we would uh, very much, we'd be very grateful for you. This actually is going not only to the, um, to the Afghan family, who hopefully we'll all get a chance to meet and get to know um, in, the, in the years and days ahead, um, but also uh, we have a family from El Salvador as you know that our community has been offering sanctuary to over the course of the last several years and we have a continued commitment to this family as well. So this is a really beautiful way for us to live into uh, our deepest Torah and our greatest commitments um, and also to have a great time together in the park tomorrow morning. So we're gonna be meeting um, at 9.30 tomorrow morning and, uh, and hope I'll see many of you there. Um, if you are interested in being part of the welcome circle, that's gonna be working with this family as they resettle into Los Angeles. Um, we have a core team that we're developing that's going to be involved in helping assess what the needs are and then helping to provide um, or to gain access to those, uh, to, to those things that this family will need. Please email brooke at ikar.org um, if you're able to help in this way, we'd be incredibly grateful. Um, so on Monday night this week, uh, this coming week on December 13th, we are, uh, we're gonna be screening a film called Let It Be Morning. And I wanna just mention this for a moment. I don't know if you saw the, uh, the information about this go out. Um, this is a form, this, this, this um, film is based on, um, or the writings of a Palestinian Israeli author named Syed Kashua, who many of you know um, and read. And it's a story about a Palestinian born Israeli citizen um, who's unable to return home to Jerusalem when uh, his ro the road is blocked uh, by soldiers. And this film, which was created by all uh, Palestinian Israelis, is actually um, Israel's contribution. The film won all kinds of awards in Israel and is now Israel's contribution um, to, or submission to, uh, for, the, for, the, um, for the Oscars. And it's uh, an incredible film. And I'm gonna be in conversation. We're gonna screen the film first at 7 p.m. at the Chinese Theater. And then I'll be in conversation with the director, Eran Kolarin. And uh, I hope many of you will join us there. Uh, it should be an, an, an incredible evening of, uh, of art and conversation. 
We also have uh, a, a, an evening on the justice of Shemitah, on debt cancellation, and building the spiritual muscle of release, which is on Tuesday, December 14th. Um, and we hope that many of you will be able to join us there. That's actually at 5 p.m. because we're doing it with our Jewish Emergent Network partners all around the country. Um, and we have uh, an upcoming conversation with Minyan Sedek's Educated Activist uh, book group reading uh, the book Evicted, uh, which I don't know if any of you here have read yet. Um, even if you haven't read the book, you can come to the book group discussion, um, but I highly recommend staying in the loop. They're really uh, identifying and reading together some of the most incredible and important books right now. Um, there are so many other great and important things that are going on here. Um, we do have two podcasts now. Uh, in addition to Rabbi Kasher's uh, Best Book Ever podcast, um, we have a, a, a family podcast uh, with Rabbi Tzadok and Rabbi Pan. It's called Ikar Family Style. Um, so keep eyes out for that. And finally, um, I want to make a, a, a sort of final plug to join us on Ikar's Central um, and Eastern Europe trip. Um, as many of you know, this trip is happening this summer from June 24th to July 4th. And we're going to be starting in Berlin um, in, and then moving to, uh, to Warsaw um, in Poland. We're going to be going to Slovakia and going to Hungary. Um, and the idea of this trip is really for us to meet uh, rising Jewish leaders and pro-democracy activists in each of these places to tap back into uh, to the incredible Jewish history um, in Central and Eastern Europe. Um, many of us will be tracing our own roots on this trip and trying to identify the places where our own ancestors come from um, and, and also really try, is beginning to understand where the seeds of vitality are for the renaissance in Jewish life that's happening in, in Europe today, despite or in spite of the incredible challenges that, that, that are, um, the Jewish communities are facing there. Um, we are going to be going to Auschwitz together, and then uh, we will be biking from Auschwitz to Krakow. This is a 60-mile bike ride. If you don't bike, you can take the van. No judgment. It's totally okay. But it's also an, uh, an opportunity to shift the narrative um, because, uh, because for many, many years, uh, the Jewish community has often treated Europe like it is the graveyard of our people. And that uh, inadvertently, I think, really undermines the work of incredible young Jewish activists who are really trying to build a vibrant and vital uh, pro-democracy movement uh, and future in this place. And so, um, so what we're going to do is land in Krakow from Auschwitz and then celebrate Kabbalat Shabbat uh, in the center of town, and then be part of a food and music festival, Motzei Shabbat, Saturday night. It's going to be an incredible adventure. So this is your opportunity to sign up. If you think you can come, but you're not sure, please let us know, and we can uh, explore together. Um, Susanna, Sean, and Gosha have been working for two years on this trip. Um, it looks absolutely incredible. My family will be there. We would love for you to join us as well. Um, and I, I hope that you'll uh, let us know if you're interested in coming with us. And with that... I turn it over to Rabbi David Kasher, who's going to share with us some Torah this morning. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, to, thanks to Neil Spears for the hat. Neil said, you know, what kind of rabbi doesn't wear a hat? Come on, like, from it up a little bit. No, he didn't, he didn't say that. Um, okay, I, I, uh, I, had a, I had a friend say to me recently, um, you speak so passionately about the most obscure things. <laughs> didn't, it didn't sound exactly like a compliment. It's sort of like, you, you seem very, very interested in very uninteresting things. Um, but it's, it's, it's kind of true. Um, oh, I should take this off, right? It's kind of true. Uh, I, I'll, I'll give you just a list of some of my recent, recent class uh, topics, fascinating topics, including olives, um, the difference between oil and wax, the sciatic nerve, city wall structures, um, why the prayer that we refer to as having 18 blessings actually has 19 blessings, a, a whole lot on the relationship between Hebrew and Aramaic, and, and a long discussion on whether a couple of dots in the Torah are scribal notes or just accidentally spilled drops of ink. Now, I, I am interested in all of these things, but 
I, I can see why my friend might not be. Um, you know, because really my friend is making a, a larger point about, about Jewish study in general, which is that there's so much of it that seems so arcane. Why is Judaism buried in so many details? Right? The laws of the Torah themselves, you know, include the commingling of wool and linen, intricate temple rituals. How did the priest kill the, the, the pigeon that was offered as a sacrifice for the poor family? How, what happens when my ox gores your cow? Right? And then once, once that's just the Torah, once we get into the, the hair-splitting pill pool of the Talmud, then it's like all the different ways that you can transport an object on Shabbat, or all the different kinds of guarding an object for your friend, or all of the different kinds of objects that can contract ritual impurity. It's like, you know, why? Why? Why, why do we keep studying this stuff? Instead of just focusing on what's relevant to us, or, or at least what's inspiring to us. Well, why, why, why all the details? So let me, let me try to explain today a little bit um, my, love, my love of the details um, by telling you a story. Uh, and it's a story, it's a retelling of, a, of, a, of an old rabbinic story. It's a story that imagines Jacob and Joseph also sitting around and studying arcane details. So this week, uh, this is, this is Par Parshat Vayigash, and it's a very dramatic Torah reading, um, because 22 years earlier, Jacob sent his son Joseph off to, to check on his brothers, and then, and then hasn't seen him since, because his brothers seized him and sold him into slavery, and Joseph ended up a slave in Egypt, and then, and then an Egyptian prison, but then remarkably rises to power in Egypt, becomes second command of all of Egypt. And when his brothers come and, and see him there, they at first don't recognize him. So Joseph starts messing with them, all kinds of machinations and manipulations, until finally, as Rabbi Brown said earlier, finally, there's some, some great moment of, of confrontation. And, and Joseph breaks down and says, who he is. I'm Joseph. And the second thing he says is, is my father still alive? He wants to see his father. He hasn't stopped thinking about his father all these years. And surely Jacob hasn't stopped thinking about Joseph all these years, but the, but the Joseph that Jacob is thinking about is a Joseph he presumes to be dead. So when the brothers come back and report that not only is Joseph alive, but he is the ruler over all of Egypt, and if you have a, a red chumash here, this is on page 279, we read that his heart went numb. Jacob's heart went by a fogly bow. His heart went numb, for he did not believe them. His heart went numb. The, the Ramban says that his breathing stopped, that he was like a dead person. His heart stopped. And then suddenly, something happens that starts his heart again. This is Genesis chapter 45, uh, verse 27. Vaidabur alav it kol divrei Yosef asher diber lehem, and they recounted all that Joseph had said to them. Vayarata agalot, and when he saw the wagons asher shalach Yosef lesetoto that Joseph had sent to transport him, vatechiruach Yaakov avihem, then the spirit of their father Jacob revived. When he they told everything to him, and they saw the wagon. So what was it that suddenly convinced Jacob that they were telling the truth, that Joseph really was alive? So there's an incredible story that appears in the commentary of Rashi. Rashi says, Masar lahem siman. Joseph gave them a sign. He gave them a sign that alluded to the topic that he and Jacob were studying just before he left. The section of the Torah dealing with Egla Arufa the calf with the broken neck. And that is why, when it says that Jacob saw the wagons, Vayarata Agalot, that Joseph had sent, that Joseph had sent, and not Pharaoh. Okay, <laughs> so it's a little complicated. There's a lot to unpack here, so let, let me explain. It, it was not anything that they said that finally convinced Jacob that they were telling the truth. It was the seeing of the wagons. And it wasn't because that was proof that Joseph really was royalty now and could, could command wagons to be sent. No, it's the word for wagon, agala, which sounds and, and looks just like the word for calf, egla. 
Eglah. And so Joseph was sending a coded reference to the section of the Torah that was the last thing that they sat and studied together, a section of the Torah that speaks about the ritual of the Egla Arufa, the calf with the broken neck. And that is something that only Jacob would know. Now, <laughs> this is sort of a bizarre suggestion, the idea that they were, they were sitting and studying Torah together. This is before the Torah was given. Right? The, the, the section, actually, that we're referring to is in Deuteronomy, and they're living in the book of Genesis. So even in the sequence of the Torah, they can't, can't possibly. But this is a, a recurring image, an idea that the rabbis have, that these, these holy ancestors of ours, they, they had to have had some contact with the Torah. They, surely they had some version of the Torah that they studied together. But what were they studying? The case of the Eglah Rufa, the case of the, the calf with the broken neck. So what is that case? Well, it's, a, 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 it's a, a, a situation. A person turns up dead in the middle of nowhere, out in the fields. And they measure the distance to the closest town. And the elders from that town come and they perform a ritual. They break the calf's neck and they wash their hands. And then, and here I have... Uh, you can, if you want to see this, you can turn to page 1106. And you can see even the word there in, in, in verse 4, ha'egla, is the same as the word for, for wagons. But then in, in verse 7 there, when they wash their hands, they, they make this declaration. Our hands did not shed this blood, nor did our eyes see it done. Absolve, O, you, o Lord, your people Israel, whom you redeemed, and do not let the guilt for the blood of the innocent remain among your people Israel, and they will be absolved of blood guilt. Okay, that's how the elders in the closest town absolve themselves of the guilt for the death of this anonymous person in the field. But what guilt? How do they have any guilt? They, nobody, surely we do not assume that these elders murdered this person. So you may remember Rabbi Brow spoke very powerfully about this on Yom Kippur a sermon called Living in the Plural, which is excellent. I really recommend it to you. And she spoke about this case as a, as a template for the idea of collective responsibility, that we are all responsible for one another. And, the, and our, our rabbis go in very much the same direction with this case. They imagine, no, these elders didn't murder this person, but perhaps they, they didn't feed them. Perhaps they didn't ask them how they were doing, and, and critically, perhaps they didn't send them off safely. Now, though, now the parallel between this case and the story of Jacob and Joseph becomes clear. Joseph, who Jacob last saw wandering out there in the fields, alone, left in the field, just like the anonymous body in this case, Jacob, who was the last elder to see him alive, who sent him off into danger. And surely on some level, Jacob must have felt responsible all these years. Where did he send Joseph? Where did Joseph go? Why did he send him off that day? And so Joseph is not just saying to his father, yes, remember, it's me. We studied this section of the Torah together. Joseph is saying, if you were worried about what you had done, if you felt guilt all these years, you are absolved. Your hands are clean. It's a, bril it's a brilliant connection the rabbis are making. There's a lot here, but my point is just how Joseph communicates. Joseph and Jacob have a shared language of symbols that they derive from their learning. And then the symbols become embedded with meaning, so much so that then it's not just the symbols, but related words to the symbols that can evoke that meaning for Joseph and Jacob. And that's what we get from studying Torah. A, a kind of symbolic mapping, a way of putting marker points, mapping meaning onto our existence. In the academic world, they would call this semiotics. Right, the study of signs and symbols. But this isn't just the study of signs and symbols, but the creation of signs and symbols, marker points in our existence. And everybody does this. Maybe you have symbols. Class, what are the symbols in your family? In, in my family, the persimmon is loaded with meaning because uh, my mom and my stepfather have a persimmon tree in the back, and my mom 
kind of eats them by the, by the buckets full when, when they're in season. And only the hard ones, not the soft ones. And nobody else in the family likes persimmons. So for, persimmons are, are kind of a symbol for my mom's idi idiosyncratic joys, the way she knows exactly what she wants. And none of us quite understand her, but we all love her so dearly for all of her quirks. Right? My, mom, my mom, who signs off all of her texts um, with a, a, the, a bee emoji, because her name is Beatrice. Right? So, so the bee is a symbol in our family. And in fact, my stepfather is an entomologist, so all bugs are like symbols in, in our family of, the, of the, our friends in the natural world, our, our little friends in the natural world. We have a, affection for bugs in our family. Right? And, and I'm sure you have symbols in your family. What are the signs in your family? Maybe, maybe it's a hibiscus flower. Or maybe it's a Joshua tree. Right? What, what are the things that you would put on your family crest? But if you're in the Jewish family, then olives are a symbol. Olives are not just olives. Olives are a symbol for the way that our people have been plucked and pressed and beaten, but have produced the purest, most beautiful oil that gives light in the darkest days. A sciatic nerve is not just a sciatic nerve. It's a reminder of a nighttime battle with an angel, a deep spiritual struggle with the self. And we cannot hear the sound of a ram's horn without standing again at Mount Sinai. And we cannot taste horseradish without being reminded of the tremendous suffering that our people have gone through. That's a big part of what we're doing when we study the Torah together. We are creating a symbolic mapping system that allows us to move through the world, attributing meaning to everything around us. But we do it together. And when we do it together, we learn how to communicate with each other in the deepest way. To be able to communicate meaning, deep meaning to one another with just a word or an image, the smell of a spice, the glow of a candle, the sound of a shofar, the taste of a bitter herb. When we study the Torah with all of its details, all of its intricacies, that the world begins to, to be charged with meaning, to speak to us, and we speak to one another. When we study the Torah with all of its arcane details, we learn how to communicate to one another, sometimes without even speaking the most profound truths. So, uh, so I invite you to study with me, to study the Torah with me in all of its intricacy, and together we'll learn to speak a language of truth. Shabbat shalom. All right, Yisakach, Rabbi Kasher, beautiful, beautiful. We're going to close our service uh, with Musa. We begin on page 184. <laughs>
ברחמה הפשנית, לעיני כוחך להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אלוהיכם, ובדברי קודשך כתוב לאמור.
103 קדיש שלם. נתקדל ויקדש ימי רבו, ויולמה דברי חילתי וימליך מלכותי, וחייכו יום לכל, וחיי דכל בית ישראל, בגלה ובזמן קרים, וימרו אמן, יש מירב המבורך, ויולם יום ויום היה יפרה. ויתברך <laughs> Psalm Lemurner's Kaddish is on page 207. <laughs> ויית הדר ויית עלה ויית הלל שמי לקודשה ובריכו לאלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה תושבחתה ונחמתה דאמירן באומה ואמרו אמן יהי שלמה רבה משמיה 
Shechayim, Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imru. Amen. Oseh shalom imromav, hu ya'aseh shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imru. Amen. Amen. We're going to close our service with Ein Kevahinu on the left-hand side of page 204. And right after, uh, right after our davening is done, we're going to invite everyone to join us uh, for Kiddush and then for lunch. Um, we'd love that we can do these meals together again um, in a safe way uh, with deep gratitude. Um, to Hillel Tige for being here uh, despite the, uh, the hardship. Uh, to Ross, who's back, um, and hopefully continue healing to this amazing uh, and beautiful and wondrous team. Um, we invite you to please rise as we close uh, with Ein Kelohenu, page 204. Ein Ein Ein